Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the fifth tutorial on AM Designer. Today, we're going to be going over pagination and expandable text fields, making those text fields of yours and your forms dynamic and expandable. So let's get started. So last time we discussed the difference between float and position layouts and why float layouts are, you know, the, the pinnacle, like the really important part of designing forms in AEM Designer. They're so important to use as a best practice because it'll allow us to do expandable text fields. So we've taken a look at this form before, but I'm just going to show you again. If this were open, if this were a static PDF that you made in Adobe Acrobat, let's say, uh, upon runtime, the end user would not be able to expand this text field. You could make it so they could scroll through it, but uh, that's a bit cumbersome to do in practice. But with Designer, you can make your text fields expand to encompass all the text that your end user would type into this form. So how do we get to this point? So there's a few things we have to enable. We have to make sure we have covered before we can get our text fields to be expandable. So we're just going to take a look at the first row. So we have a text object, so deviation number, and then we have our expandable text field. So there's a few things we have to do. First off with our text field, we have to make sure we are checking allow multiple lines. Otherwise, it's not going to expand in any event. Um, and then over here, we go into layout. We have to make sure that we can expand our text field to fit, but only vertically. Expanding it horizontally would not be what we're trying to accomplish because then we'll just go off the edge of the paper. But we want to expand this text field vertically, so that'll work. Uh, next up, assuming you're, you're, you want your end user to be able to have a text field that could go across multiple pages, you're going to want to allow your page breaks within your content. And so that is set within the parent subform. Mm -hmm. Yes, there we go. So within, uh, so that, that cell was within a table and then above that is the parent subform, P1 subform. And so over here we have checked allow page breaks within the content. So what this will do is it'll allow our text field to go across multiple pages. Mm hmm not quite. Lovely, okay, so I just expanded this text field to go across from the first page and into the second page. And so this is still one continuous field. Very good, okay, so that, that's all well and good. But suppose we want, uh, recall, recall the concept of master pages. So, you know, pages where you can have content across, you can have the same amount of content display across multiple pages. Suppose you want your text field to expand from one master page to another. Um, that case, in that case, that's where pagination comes in. So basically, after you, after you enable the parent subworm to allow page breaks within the content, that will default to essentially creating another copy of that first master page onto your second page once you've expanded that form field out into that second page. So in this case, for example, we have our we just have a text object up here, just a text label labeled master page one. This is just to let us know that we're still in master page one. So once we expand it out, notice that we're still into master page one, which is the default. And for this particular document, that's how it's going to go because there only is one master page. But suppose we wanted there to be two, ma if we had two master pages and we wanted the text field to start in master page one, but then expand into the second master page. So here's how we would do that. I'm opening up a different document. This one has three master pages. So the first master page it looks like this and the second one looks like this. So when you fill in this expandable text field, I, I have it set up so when you fill up this field, it will spill into the second master page. So, so we'll fill in our field right here. And as you can see, it spills into the second master page. So not the first. So this master page is not, there's only one copy of this very first page, but all subsequent copies will be of this second kind of page. Now, how do we do this? So with pagination, if we scroll up, Break this down. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, there we go. Okay, so within page one, underneath with the, we have our subform that contains that expanding text field, and that is located underneath P1. So the pagination here is, we have to specify the overflow. So P1, page one, starts underneath the first master page, but we want it to go into the second master page's content area. So that's exactly what we have to specify. So if the data set must be paginated, we have to say we want it to overflow into the content area of MP2 content. And we can specify which one we want. So the default would be, you know, the first content area to create, that would just create more copies of the first page. But in this case, we want the second page's content area. Or we could also do the third page's content area if we'd like. But yeah, that's about all there is to it for pagination and expanding text fields. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time when we're going to start discussing actions, the action builder, and some basic scripting. Till then, take care.